The Unshackled Waves, Episode 67. Hello and welcome to the Unshackled Waves podcast. I'm Tim Wilms and this is another report show. Now, just a reminder about the format of this show. We bring on a guest who has been on the ground at a recent event so we can have a first-hand account of what happened. I'm joined once again by Associate Editor of the Unshackled, Tom Peroni. Welcome back. Thanks for having me, Tim. Now, we were both at the Australian Pride March in Melbourne, which was on uh, Sunday, the 25th of June, 2017, which was organised by the True Blue Crew. Now, there's a lot of stuff said about the Patriot movement, so we thought we'd attend to see what these people are really like and what their uh, rallies are really like. The left always hold a counter-protest to these sorts of events. Uh, The mainstream media always report both sides as being violent, So the Unshackled did a series of reports to to talk about what really happened that day. So we thought that uh, we would reflect on the experience and offer some analysis. Now, uh, as I mentioned, there's a stereotype of the the Patriot movement, the the flyer that the socialists handed out. It was at the, because I attended the Margaret Court uh, protest the previous Thursday, and they were handing out flyers promoting their protest on Sunday saying, a protest against the far right and they they said that these were a group of nazis and and of course the the media and the left they always paint them as hotheads people who uh, want to fight um but but it's yeah it's that that's the stereotype but it- yeah no you're right um i mean i was i was obviously there at the protest on the weekend um so i you know that was my first i suppose involvement with this sort of thing um in real life rather than just you know looking at stuff on the internet and yeah, I mean, the, the stereotype very much does paint them as being, you know, aggressive and violent and racist and whatever else. And yeah, no, it, in, in reality, I think that the, um, you know, the so-called patriot movement doesn't really fulfill that, that representation. Um, so, I mean, there were people of various different backgrounds, you know, racially and um, in terms of their age groups as well. There were people there with their families, young, young children as well. Um, and I don't think that they were there to start a fight or anything. They were just there to, to you know, wave the flag and uh, to, you know, to show their pride in, in Australia as a nation. And it felt as there was the, uh, the far left, Antifa. Um, uh, I, th- I felt that they were the ones that, that were there to uh, incite violence in most cases. Yeah, uh, these patriots, they're, they're willing to have an um, honest discussion with people who uh, talk to them in, in good faith. Uh, but obviously, that's uh, they're very suspicious of the the mainstream media. Um, I remember when I first arrived, they uh, they saw me with my video camera and they were sort of, sort of like, "Where are you from?" And like I explained, from Lewis the Unshackled, and we had some name recognition, so they knew that you know we were uh, a decent media organisation. So they uh, they were much uh, much more friendly afterwards and sort of said, oh, "Apologies for our initial hostility. It's just that." The, the media always tries to uh, misrepresent us. Yeah, no, it, it really is a sad reflection, I think, of the, the state of the mainstream media in Australia, the fact that, you know, you have this organisation and they can't even go out in public, wave a few flags and not be branded as racists. Um, so it really is a yeah, sad indictment of the, the mainstream media in this country. But I think it's great that we were able to get out there and give their side of the story. And I'm sure if our viewers check out some of the links that we've got posted on the website and some of the articles we wrote about it, they can... Yeah, they can really just check out the truth for themselves and see what actually unfolded at this event. Yeah, they, they having said that, um, uh, the Patriots, they're, they're not afraid to sort of, you know, the people, uh, the socialists who, uh, you know, insult them and are aggressive to them, they're, they're not afraid to dish it out uh, back. I mean, it was interesting to note that, you know, we're all friendly with them before the march started, but as soon as it started, you know, they were, you know, giving it back to the socialists, you know, uh, uh, calling them, you know, Marxist scum. Uh, so, yeah, so they're, they're prepared to, you know, give a bit back. Yeah, no, I mean, they don't, they don't exactly take a uh, backwards foot and, you know, good on them, I reckon. Um, you know, they're faced with some very aggressive sort of tactics. So I, I think it's perfectly within their rights to, you know, stand up for themselves where necessary. Um, I don't think that they incited anything. 
Um, they were really just defending themselves in most cases. And yeah, no, I um, I thought it was great to see them out there and and you know not ashamed of their views, just willing to just go out and you know be loud and proud and and not take a backward step at any point. And because of the counter protest, there was a heavy police presence there. I mean, I arrived the the march wasn't scheduled to uh, start until 11.30 a.m. I arrived there at 9.30 a.m. and there was already uh, police all throughout the Carlton Gardens where they were meeting and uh, police were, were searching people uh, when they arrived, which is sort of, uh, I expected it, but it's sort of, you know, wow, like police are searching me for weapons. That's quite a uh, invasive step by the police. Uh, but it's, uh, it's interesting to, and it was pointed out to me by one of the patriots that the police, they're always facing the socialists. They're never facing the, mm. the patriots because it's clearly to keep the, the socialists away. I mean, they're the ones who are trying to start the trouble. Yeah, well, I mean, interestingly enough, whenever you have one of these right wing marches, you always have, you know, Antifa and all the, you know, all the professional protesters out there to give their two cents. And yet, when it's the other way around, when you have the left having some, you know, ridiculous protest about, you know, God knows what, LGBTI whales saving the environment, who knows? Whenever they have one of these protests, you never have the far right there to oppose them. Um, and I, I've always thought that that's an incredible double standard. The fact that we you know, we think it's acceptable for Antifa to protest people waving Australian flags, and yet it's perfectly acceptable, they think anyway, for them to go out there and, um, you know, not face any sort of opposition. Um, I, If anything, I think it would be great to start seeing right-wing people start counter-protesting their rallies and, you know, give them a taste of their own uh, medicine, I suppose. Yeah, uh, their their marriage equality rallies or refugee rallies, they're they're hardly ever disturbed, and I, I doubt they would take too kindly by a counter protest uh, be, uh, being being car carried out. Then I definitely think these patriots are achieving a lot more and making a greater stand than you know just people complaining on the internet and getting into Facebook fights with the various Antifa socialist uh, organisations. I mean, but I, I think the the streets is where. I, I think you know we really need to at, uh, take it back, and it's the the socialists. One of their uh, cries is "Who streets our streets?" Well, uh, the patriots they, they said that said that themselves, which is I think you know because Melbourne is so bad that you know basically you should be able to you know wave an Australian flag in a major city in Australia and not have the threat of violence. Mm. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, I mean, we're seeing a a similar sort of um, you know, set of events happening in the US at the moment. You had the, the Battle of Berkeley in California a few months ago, where it was, you know, very similar. You had a bunch of, uh, you know, right-wing free speech activists, and they were, you know, violently attacked by Antifa, and they stood up for themselves. Um, and I think we need, we need more of the same in Australia, quite frankly. We shouldn't have to be intimidated. We shouldn't have to feel, you know, vilified for having these views. Um, and as you said, I think it's great that there's people who are out there who are marching in the streets who are willing to stick it to these guys. Uh, and I loved how, like, they they were they always said that uh, one of their chants, the socialists, was you know racist, sexist, anti queer, which had nothing to do with what the patriots <laughs> were marching about. And also, they kept comparing them to exactly, the Nazis yeah. and saying, "Oh, you know, <laughs> all these millions of people died in the the Holocaust." But it's interesting; these socialists they defend an ideology which uh, killed over a hundred million people last century. Yet they're still proud to call themselves socialists, Marxists, communists, whatever. That's that, that's fine to them. Yeah. Well, it does seem to be the I suppose the go-to insult for them is you know anyone who disagrees with them is a Nazi. Um, which I just find absurd. Uh, also, what I found interesting was at the rally, um, comparing the two sides, you had you know, Antifa and the far left, they were all um, you know, upper middle class rich kids from uh, you know, racially white backgrounds. And then you had the, the patriots who were you know, working class and I thought a lot more racially diverse than the Antifa protesters were. So even though they love to push this narrative that everyone else is racist and everyone else is you know, this phobic and that phobic, when you actually look at the reality and you go to these events and you see it for yourself, it's actually quite the opposite of that, I thought. Um, I would say that they're the elitists. They're the ones who have a, um, an exclusive little organisation which is, you know, only, uh, only open to certain people. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I really think that going to this thing and seeing it for myself, seeing it with my own eyes, was a, a great experience to have. 
Yeah, it's uh, all these patriots. I mean, they have uh, day jobs dur during the week, but these socialists they they tend basically well, they have their own rallies and then they go and ca counter protest to everything. I mean, they're they're the ones who who, se who seem to be the the professional class having the time to protest everything. Exactly. Yeah, I think that I would assume a lot of them are university students, um, or maybe you know just working casually or part time. But as you said, most of the most of the guys who are in the pro the Aussie Pride March, most of them have full time jobs. They have families. You know, they're just trying to live normal, uh, you know, average lives like anyone else. But they also have political uh, convictions, and they're willing to go out in the streets and uh, and defend those views. And because uh, I was there for two hours before the march, and so I observed the the police liaisons using with the True Blue crew. And I, obviously uh, they were chatting, you know, very, uh, very constructively, wanting to make sure that the, the rally was safe. You could, you could see that both sides wanted to work with each other to achieve a peaceful rally. And it w and as I said before, designed to keep the, the socialists at bay. And it was interesting when the, the March was at the steps of Parliament House. One of the chants was oh, "Police uh, protecting fascists, trying to uh, intimidate the police." Yeah. Um, well, just in regards to the police, actually, I I don't think I've ever seen that many cops assembled in one place at one specific time, and they had you know riot gear and everything as well. I mean, I I can remember a few years ago I was in London on New Year's Eve. Um, now, I don't know if anyone watching has been to London on New Year's Eve, but the amount of cops that you have in an event like that is absolutely crazy. And even in comparison to that, um, this this protest on the weekend in Melbourne, um, that was, yeah, that was a first for me, seeing literally hundreds of cops, many of them in this uh, this riot gear. Um, yeah, it was, it was definitely a, um, a sight to behold, I thought. And uh, I was filming on the, the Patriot side and there was not one, you know, Patriot who made a run for, for the other side. There, there was a few socialists who tried to uh, ma make a run into the, the Patriot side. But it was interesting when I got home and saw the, the coverage on the, the mainstream media, like there were, the police were tackling the, the socialists, trying to keep them back, capsicum spray. And I, and I was sitting there thinking, well, all my footage is really boring compared to what the the mainstream media got from the other side? Yeah, well, that seemed to be where the action was was on their side. Um, as you said, they were the ones who were trying to, uh, you know, r run past the police, and they were the ones who were trying to incite violence. Um, I mean, the the mainstream media really didn't give an accurate depiction. I didn't think so. Most of the reports that I read afterwards, you know, focused on this idea that it was two extremes. You know, two groups of of violent individuals, and that just wasn't the case. It seems as though it was the far left who were there to incite violence, and you know the so-called far right was just there to wave flags and and chant a few songs and you know sing the national anthem, which I don't think is, um, you know that that shouldn't be frowned upon. You know we're in Australia. If you want to wave an Aussie flag or sing the national anthem, I don't think that's you know that shouldn't be frowned upon in any way. Yeah, I, I think the Patriots deliberately did that to sing the national anthem just to see the, the socialists get, you know, angry and uh, tr triggered by that, which is uh, just exposes, you know, yeah. how, how much they, they hate not just Australia, but the, anything Western as well. Oh, exactly. Yeah, look, look, as far as I can tell, they just seem to oppose um, just, just anything that's, yeah, pro-West, uh, you know, pro-Australia, you know, any of these ideas, Christianity even. Um, I don't think they actually know specifically what it is that they're opposing, but they just, they have a, you know, a few different things that they, a few different topics, I suppose, that they focus on as just being bad for whatever reason. And anyone who's associated with those, um, you know, those ideals in any way is immediately, you know, Hitler and, and whatever else. Um, but I mean, uh, you know, half of these guys, they don't even know what they're opposing. They don't even know why they're there. They just they're just virtue signaling. They just got nothing better to do with their time. It's it's actually quite funny to to speak to some of them and, and actually see for yourself how ignorant a lot of these protesters actually are. Yeah, you had a chat to uh, a few of them uh, both before and after the march, which uh, basically yeah. they're they're terrible at arguing. They just had this cartoonish version of the world. They've clearly never spoken to <laughs> any of these patriots or. Know, d done any proper like research on them they just say they're you know nazis and fascists and it's it's just you know these slurs over and over again yeah no i um as you pointed out i, I was having a debate at one point um a video actually emerged 
where it was um, one of them was was going on about how um, supposedly it was an anti queer march, and I I asked the guy, you know, can you show me where in the Facebook event it says that it's got anything to do with sexuality in any way? I mean, as I said, it was an Aussie Pride march, um, so I you know I questioned him on this. So I you know I asked him to show me proof, and he couldn't show me anything. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just a perfect example of the sort of people who, who join these movements. They don't even know why they're there half the time, I don't think. The Facebook event page, it did say that one of their concerns was safe schools. So the, the socialists obviously interpret that as being, you know, anti-queer because they, they love safe schools. But it was interesting on that subject, I ever heard, you know, one of the, the patriots sort of discussing the gay marriage issue. She said she was opposed, but, you know, she didn't have a problem with queer people. She just worried about the, the consequences of, you know, redefining marriage. Yeah, well, look, I, I don't think that um, opposing safe schools is necessarily evidence of, you know, homophobia or any sort of um, hatred in any way. I mean, if you look at the safe schools program itself, um, you know, it's not it's not so much there to, um, you know, work against bullying and things like that. It's it's actually quite a radical attempt at redefining gender and sexuality. It, in fact, if you look at the background of, um, I, I think it's Ros Ward, is yeah. the, the name of the woman who designed the program. Yeah, if you look at her background, I mean, she's a you know, crazy far left Marxist. Too. And, you know, if you look at the actual, uh, the specific um, details of safe school, it's really not there as an anti-bullying program. I, and I think people are starting to wake up to that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think potentially you can oppose safe schools without um, you know, necessarily opposing or having a problem with anyone who's gay. Um, so I think it's, yeah, it's quite dishonest for them to, um, to conflate the two in that way. Yeah, and it's also worth pointing out that the gender mix of the, the march were, was pretty even. I, I felt that there was an equal uh, representation of men and women. Yeah, um, in fact, if, you, if, if our viewers want to check out the live feed we had from the event, you can see there's actually um, a lady who's leading the, uh, the Australian Patriot um, chant. So, so she's the one who's um, you know, yelling at our streets or whatever she was saying. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, they do quite, um, quite like to you know, create this stereotype where it's um, you know, a whole bunch of angry white men, as they would say. But like I said, if you're actually on the ground at the event, and if you look at the footage, you can see that yeah, the, the gender diversity and the racial diversity is probably, uh, I would say, probably more so evident for the, the right wing than what we saw from the left wing on the day. Uh, I've, uh, in the group uh, that I was uh, near, there, there was a group of oh, what you'd describe as just um, you know, elegant elderly ladies who were participating in the march. I mean, they're definitely not the stereotype of you know, what people think thinks at a patriot march. Oh, no, you're right. I mean, there, there were people there with their families as well. Um, so, you know, as much as the mainstream media or the left might like to uh, create this, you know, this dishonest representation, I just, I couldn't, I honestly, I don't think it's, it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, and like I said, even, even just approaching a lot of these people, you would find that the, uh, the people from the, uh, the right wing, they were more willing to engage in a discussion and, you know, an actual conversation as opposed to the far left who, you know, they're not even there to, to discuss anything. It's just, you know, you're with us or you're against us and, you know, everyone's Hitler, everyone's a Nazi, and that seems to be pretty much all they have to say. Yeah. Now let's talk about the, the march itself. Now, even though it was hosted by the True Blue Crew, which is, it's a group based in Melton, which is a western suburbs uh, area of Melbourne, which uh, they're actually trying to build a Muslim suburb in, in that area. So you can understand why a group such as the True Blue Crew was formed there. Uh, but uh, they invited to lead the march uh, Blair Cottrell from the United Patriots Front, which was um, interesting. Obviously, Blair is the most prominent Patriot in Australia, the United Patriots Front uh, Facebook page has uh, all it had over 120,000 likes before it got uh, removed. And uh, mm. it's, it's interesting because Blair does have a, uh, sh shall we say, checkered past, but he's, he's quite admired by uh, all the people I speak to who are sympathetic to the Patriot movement. They all, you know, really like Blair and follow him a lot. Yeah, look, I, um, I had a brief conversation with him on the weekend and I was struck by just how articulate 
and how well spoken the guy is. Um, he's clearly very well read. He knows what he's talking about. Um, but yeah, no. Obviously, you said that he does have quite a controversial past. So he's um, he served time in prison at one point, and he said some very controversial statements here and there. Um, but yeah, I think that you know a lot of the treatment that he's gotten from the mainstream media has been largely quite unfair in many cases. And as you mentioned in regards uh, Facebook, so not only did they remove his um, his party's or his organization's profile, so the United Patriots Front, they also got rid of his personal Facebook page. So uh, the Blair Cottrell Facebook page, I think, had 10,000 or so likes, and it got deactivated, I think, literally the day after the, the march. So it would have been Monday or so. Um, Blair Cottrell's Facebook page got removed. So he can't, he can't have a, a personal profile. He can't have a, um, you know, a... a what would you call it, like a, a group or a, a page that you can like in his name, any sort of association with Facebook, and Blair Cottrell has just been completely uh, done away with. Yeah, I had a chat to him as well, and yeah, I agree with you. He's, you know, very articulate and well-read. I mean, he had a really good analysis of what's going on inside the, the Trump administration, which is, you know, not even to do with Australia. And in person, he's actually, you know, quite personable, but it's in, it was interesting to see, and I found this was with a lot of the, the patriots that, you know, they're, they're very friendly sort of, um, you know, with people who are dealing with them in good faith, but they're able to switch like that and, you know, f focus. And you saw in the footage Blair, you know, really, you know, use really, you know, battle-like language when the, the march was starting. Yeah, well, the thing that shocks me about Blair, so I only found this out recently, he's still in his 20s. So he's incredibly young. I think he's 27 or 28 or somewhere thereabouts. Um, so he's still a very young guy. Um, and, you know, he's already been able to make himself the, the leader of a massive movement at such a young age. I think it's, um, it's incredible what we're going to see from this guy in the next 10, 20 years, what someone like this can achieve. If, you know, if he's only in his 20s and he's already, um, you know, almost a celebrity in Australia in some ways, um, yeah, I think give it, you know, a few years from now and he could, he could really go on to achieve some great things. But, I mean, time will tell. We'll see. And we don't know whether, you know, all the uh, things that uh, he's alleged to have said are true or whether they're, you know, just fake news because we know that they're... Because he could have said, like, some of the things he said, you know, ironically or just to be provocative. Exactly, yeah. I mean, that, that does seem to be a uh, standard approach from the so-called alt-right is, you know, you, you want to stir people up a little bit. You want to, you know, create a bit of controversy. Um, so it's quite easy to take a lot of these quotes out of context. Um, and interestingly, I mean, you've got, if you look at the far left, if you look at someone like Clementine Ford, who has gone on the record as saying, you know, horrible things about, you know, she wants to kill all men or something ridiculous like that. And as soon as she says something like that, everyone's like, oh, well, you know, she's just joking. She's just doing it to stir people up. And then if someone on the right, you know, says something, you know, that's a little bit controversial, suddenly it's, you know, everyone wants to take it literally and everyone wants to, you know, assume that that's, that's very much representative of, of their views, which I just think is ridiculous, to be honest. So the march went from Carlton Gardens all the way to Victoria's Parliament in Spring Street, Melbourne, where we heard a series of speeches. And, and the speeches, they were all about, you know, just, you know, pride in Australia. It, you know, there should be nothing wrong with, you know, lo loving your country. And uh, it shouldn't matter, you know, what your politics is on, you know, all the various social issues, just that, you know, we're Australian. And there was one of the speakers as well who was keen to emphasise that, you know, it doesn't matter what race you are, as long as you, you know, love Australia. Exactly, yeah. Um, so there was that one speaker who, you know, he pointed out how he has a wife who was from, I think, Malaysia or, or you know, somewhere in Southeast Asia, and he's got, you know, children and grandchildren who are, you know, racially different to him. Um, so I think, yeah, you know, quite often we'll hear from the left that it's a movement of racism, and yet, um, as I said, you know, this is one of the leaders of the movement, and even he's... Uh, highlighting or emphasizing the fact that it is quite racially diverse and that race doesn't matter. It's, you know, it's pride in the nation and you know, the ideas and the, um, you know, what our history represents to us, I suppose. Uh, and of course, the, the mainstream media, they wouldn't dare air any of these speeches, but luckily, uh, the Unchecker, we captured the, the speeches in full and were able to, to put them on YouTube so people can hear them and, you know, make up their own minds. Yeah, um, well, I would recommend people check out those speeches. So Blair's in particular. Blair is an incredible speaker. Um, he's, he's really got a, a gift for public speaking. And, yeah, I would recommend checking that out if you get a chance.
And after the speeches concluded, then the march went back to uh, Carlton Gardens. But of course, uh, when the march was officially declared uh, over, that, that 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 wasn't the end of the march because the the socialists they they still wanted the opportunity to try and uh, attack the the patriots. So so what happened was that under police escort they had to. Uh, go all the way around Melbourne CBD in an attempt to to lose the the socialists. Eventually, they got to Federation Square, and I think there was just one sole protester left. So, uh, thankfully, there everyone was safe and sound. But it just shows you the effort these socialists go to in an effort to you know basically violently attack people they don't like. Yeah, I mean, this is Australia. We're we're living in you know a free country, and yet you can't even. You know, wave an Australian flag in public without, um, you know, being physically threatened by someone, which I think is disgraceful, personally. Um, but yeah, as you said, um, you know, they had to walk around the streets for ages trying to lose these guys, and yeah, eventually ended up at Fed Square. And even at that point, they still had, um, yeah, that lone pro uh, protester who was willing to uh, to still, um, you know, harass them and intimidate them. Yeah, and then they had the nerve to, you know, claim that they were being picked on, which was, of course, classic tactic of the left. <laughs> exactly. They, they love to play the victim, don't they? I mean, realistically, if they were the victims in this situation, um, you know, I, I find it a bit bizarre that they would have gone to the effort of attending the event in the first place. Um, you know, obviously, it was the, the patriots who were holding the rally. So, I mean, if, you know, if you were being victimised in some way, then, you know, why would you even go to the event in the first place? That's what I don't understand. But you know, there's not much logic going on um, with these sorts of people. So, uh, well, once uh, we got to Federation Square, then everyone was able to have a, a post-march uh, drink and a bite to eat, and we got to interview two members of the the True Blue crew, including their their leader uh, Kane. I won't say his last name, um, but yeah, that was a, a really uh, good chat and. You know, it's he, he basically talked about, you know, this wasn't about, you know, hate or anything. It was about, you know, being, being proud of our nation and wanting to preserve its safety and its prosperity and just having a cohesive community. Yeah, uh, well, I would recommend our viewers check out their Facebook page, actually. So uh, True Blue Crew, you can find it on Facebook. Um, but, yeah, no, Kane came across as a, um, a lovely, lovely bloke, I thought. Um, obviously, just proud in his nation and... I'm proud in you know everything that it represents. So um, yeah, no, it, the the opportunity to meet someone like that was fantastic, and you know to be able to have a conversation with the guy and understand what it is specifically that his movement represents, I thought was very worthwhile. And of course, it's rare for somebody like him to uh, get his message across basically, you know, unedited. We posted the the full video, you know, unedited because you know we wanted to you know, pe people to make up their own minds. And he appreciated the fact that, you know, it was, it was put there um, in full. Uh, and I think on the whole, our reporting was uh, very well received. I mean, we, we're not, uh, I was not only filming it, but we also had a third person uh, with us who was helping us out. They live streamed the event on Facebook page. And so that was very well received. And I did a written report that night. I posted the videos on the Tuesday afterwards. And a lot of the comments we got, like, thankfully, there's a non-fake news outlet there. You know, thank you for providing this uh, analysis. And it yeah, made us reflect that, yeah, there, there was nobody else who was, you know, doing uh, what we're doing here. Yeah, you know, it's it's actually quite a uh, sad reflection of you know the um, the stage that the mainstream media has reached, where you're having to actually thank a news outlet for reporting the truth. Now that to me just seems so bizarre that you know if you look at the the origins of the journalism industry, it was just a given that that's what you would do. You would just uh, you know provide an accurate depiction to the public of events that have occurred, and yet it's actually gotten to the point now where people are having to go out of their way to say, yeah, thanks guys, thanks for you know, telling the truth and telling the people what happened. I just find that ridiculous. Um, I mean, there were, you know, news crews there from, I think, you know, Channel 7 and Channel 9 and whoever else, but they oh, weren't really interested there, in reporting yeah. the truth. But, yeah, um, but they didn't even seem interested in reporting the truth. Um, they just seemed to want to, you know, just have these, these pointless interviews where it would just be, you know, a loaded question and a, a sad attempt at, you know, creating like a gotcha moment almost, you know, trying to catch someone out as you know, saying something politically incorrect. Um, 
so yeah, I, I think that what we're seeing in Australia, um, in terms of the mainstream media, I think um, hopefully we'll see um, you know the industry more broadly just fall in and collapse on itself. Um, and I think that's the uh, that's where we see the the importance of alternative media, uh, like the Unshackled, for example, really stepping in to fill that void. Yeah. Oh, this is the we we've done uh, public events before, but this is um, first uh, we've done now two events in Melbourne, and definitely we want to do more on the ground reporting because that's what people really like first hand accounts and the the articles and videos they they did really well and you know people were really interested in you know see, uh, seeing the the truth of what happened and also uh, being there and experiencing the patriot rally for myself it just exposed to me the the lies that the left and the media tell i mean i was uh, debating with uh, a leftist after after the event who said that oh the the police were just you know mean to the socialists for no reason and it was police brutality and it was like I saw the uh, footage on the mainstream media like there were people trying to you know make a run for the uh, for the patriots like it's not like the police just you know you know whacked people or pepper sprayed them for no reason and if the police did you know overreact like did you ever think to wonder why that might be the case it's because you know if you guys have a history of you know violent protests yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think all that people need to do is just see this stuff for this themselves. Um, you know, come to a protest, uh, check it out. You know, see see what Antifa carries on with. See what the sort of tactics uh, tactics that they use are. Um, you know, these people aren't reasonable. They're not. Um, you know, they're not civilized members of society. They can't. You know, they can't behave one way. They can't behave like an animal and then you know get upset when the cops want to treat them like the animals they are. Um, you know, you've got to c create a a consistent standard. Um, and interestingly, you did mention the the fact that the Unshackled is trying to uh, go to more of an effort to provide um, live coverage of these sorts of events. So I'd recommend to our viewers to check out. Um, in a few months' time, we're going to be uh, providing coverage of the Bendigo Threes trial. Um, so obviously, they've been in and out of the courts um, for some time now. And come September, they're going to be uh, making another appearance. So stay tuned, and we'll uh, provide some coverage of that event, uh, live feed, ideally. Yeah. Uh, definitely, we'll uh, ma make sure that uh, we have some people covering that as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, just uh, going back to uh, the the left and their lies, it's it came across to me that these people they they blatantly lie, like they they say stuff they know is not true, but they say it to per perpetuate their agenda. Oh, exactly. Um, you know, they love to spin the truth. They love to. Uh, create a particular narrative, um, but as I said, if you just go to these events and you check it out for yourself, you'll be able to see what actually goes on, and you'll be able to see the, yeah, the reality behind all the lies which they try to push. Uh, and uh, probably the most infamous uh, le uh, leftist website is the Antifa Sydney website, which uh, f uh, ba basically I would say, you know, d don't believe like anything uh, that's on there. I mean, it's basically just a, a smear on all, all these Patriots uh, character. A and of course they, you know, gloat when they're attacked. I mean, it's just a vile site. Yeah, no, so I, I discovered it recently, actually. Um, it's quite pathetic, really. So they've, they've gone to the effort of researching these people because they've made the mistake of, you know, waving an Aussie flag in public, which is apparently a bad thing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I now have the aim or the ambition to get on that side one day. I would take it as a badge of honour, if anything. So, I, yeah, I mean, if there's anyone from Antifa watching, please throw me on there. I'd, I'd love to see my face pop up on one of those sites. Uh, they they doxed uh, Sukath and Damien when they were at a reclaim rally earlier this year, and uh, they they uh, they could they couldn't help but lie there as well. They they said that Damien was an editor for the Unshackled and Sukath was a contributor. When Sukath is the co-editor in chief, along with me, like the person in charge, but they wanted yeah. to make it out like Damien was the white man in charge and Sukath was just this you know <laughs> coloured person who 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 was you know just uh, sub subverbient to uh, Damien. Okay, see, I wasn't aware that Damien and Sukith were on that particular website. I'll, uh, I'll check uh, it out, though, when yeah, I get a it, chance. It was um, a report on the, the Reclaim Rally. They have it, they're, they're not lucky enough to get their own page yet, but it was, it was, uh, okay. it, it was like, 
uh, a report on the rally and like these were the people that were there and like a photo of each of them and you know basically uh, trying, yeah, to yeah. Try, try, trying to shame them. Okay, see, I mean, I take this as a compliment. If anything, if we're getting to the point where our enemies are acknowledging us and trying to bring us down, I think that's great. Um, so, like I said, I mean, if Antifa is watching, please give us more coverage. We're loving it. Um, but yeah, no, as you said, they they do run that that pathetic website, um, and you know, so most of the people on there, I think, are pretty reasonable in most of their views. Um, I think even Tony Abbott's got a page on there, and I don't think anyone would suggest that Tony Abbott is you know, racist or whatever else. I mean, you might not agree with him on everything, but but to say that he's, you know, a fascist or whatever, I think is just absurd. Uh, they can't have, you know, even afford proper web hosting. I mean, it's still a WordPress site. Okay, yeah, I wasn't aware of that, but yeah, I mean, it speaks volumes, doesn't it? And of course, yeah, it's not just the left who lie, but the media as well. I mean, their report said that uh, opposing sides clash. No, that's fake news. The socialists clashed with the police. Mm. Uh, the socialists were the ones trying to, you know, attack the, the patriots. The patriots were just standing back, you know, just enjoy, enjoying the the day and celebrating Australia. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, what what would you expect, though, from the Australian mainstream media? Um, you know, we saw um, it was Andrew O'Keefe a few months back interviewing Cassie J. I mean, that was just that was pathetic. Like, I don't even know what that was. It wasn't an interview. Um, but you know, these are the sorts of people that get jobs for the mainstream media. In fact, I was talking to some of these journalists on the weekend, and most of them were clueless. You know, if you ask them anything about the basics of you know politics or you know anything to do with um, I suppose broader social issues which exist in Australia, they don't know what's going on. They're just they're talking heads. They're celebrities. You know, we, we shouldn't be taking these people seriously. They're, they're the Kim Kardashians of Australia. Just ignore them. Just turn off your TVs and, you know, just, just don't give them the attention that they're seeking. Yeah. Uh, I, can't th yeah I can't think of a single uh, mainstream media organisation, even Murdoch, which can be relied on for the truth. Well, yeah, I, I suppose, you know, News Corp probably isn't quite as bad as some yeah. of the other ones. Um, I mean, the, the Australian isn't too bad. I'll give the Australian some credit. Um, but I mean, like I'm, I'm from Brisbane originally and yeah, I mean, the Korea mail isn't really, uh, particularly, you know, sort of particularly high standard and even, uh, I believe is the Herald Sun, I think the equivalent in Melbourne. Yes. Um, yeah, it's just a tabloid rag. So yeah, I wouldn't really, uh, yeah, give too much credit to, uh, to newspapers like that. Well, that's probably summarizes our experience at the Australian Pride March. So thank you once again for joining me, Tom. No worries. Thanks, Tim. And of course, as we said, we intend to cover more events in the future because uh, not only is it good to uh, get out in the, the field, it's also we get to provide our uh, viewers with uh, first-hand on-the-ground reports, which uh, are, ba are based on the reception so far. People are really appreciate that. And of course... The yeah, I look forward to doing more of them in the near future. And of course, uh, the usual reminders apply at the end of the show. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't signed up to the email list at theunshackled.net slash subscribe. Uh, merchandise uh, for The Unshackled is on sale at uh, uprightmarket.com. Uh, please consider supporting the work of The Unshackled by becoming a patron on Patreon. We've arranged some awesome rewards for uh, people who sign up to support us. And of course, please uh, subscribe to this podcast. You can do so on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, or view the video version on YouTube. And of course, don't forget to keep checking the unshackled.net on a regular basis for all the latest news. Thanks once again for listening, and we'll see you next time.